We will start today's dars uh, as a continuation of our previous dars in which we started studying the life of the Promised Messiah uh, We went over some historical facts about the ancestors of uh, the Promised Messiah that they uh, were very noble men of uh, the Iranian tribe uh, which resided in Samarkand and then they later on, later on moved to India and they were uh, known as Mughals in uh, the Indian subcontinent. Uh, we discussed uh, Promised Messiah uh, blessed childhood and how he devoted himself to prayers and he would always stay in the mosque and spend most of his time in seclusion. And we learned a little bit about his youth, his first marriage. Uh, he went to Sealkot for work and we learned that uh, he was always very much disengaged um, with these worldly matters and he always wanted to devote his uh, entire time for the service of Islam and Ahmadiyyat and how he came across uh, two big groups in India at that time, one was Christians and the other one was uh, the people uh, of Arya Samaj, uh, who, Hindu religion, and how he debated with him and uh, always wanted to promote the victory of Islam and establish the victory of Islam through arguments. So in that series, we came up to year 1874 and this was the time when Promised Messiah Islam, had returned from Seal Ghod and he was becoming known and popular in the masses as his literary work was being published in various newspapers and as he was coming into contact with the Aryas and Christians in terms of challenging them um, <clears throat> and dispelling some of the misconceptions about Islam and and argue and presenting arguments in the favor of Islam. So in about 1890, 18, uh, 1876, this is uh, the time a little bit before the demise of uh, Hazrat Masima Islam's father. Hazrat Masima Islam himself writes in Kitabul Bariya, pages 164 to 167, he says, During the lifetime of my father, when his death was approaching, I saw in a dream an old holy personage with a blessed countenance who conveyed to me that it was customary in the family of the Holy Prophet wasallam to fast for a period by way of preparation for the reception of heavenly light. I took this as an indication that I should follow this tradition. I therefore deemed it proper to adhere to fasting over a lengthy period. The wonders that I experienced as a result of such fasting include a variety of subtle visions that were manifested to me. I met some of the past prophets and some of the highly placed saints among the Muslims. Moreover, I was vouchsafed visions of spiritual light in the shape of bright columns of green and red, so beautiful and enchanting that their description cannot be conveyed in words. These columns extended up to heaven. Some of them were bright white, some green, and some red. Their sight filled my heart with great joy. There is no delight in life which could be compared with the delight that the heart and soul experienced through beholding them. I am given the understand I am given to understand that these columns were a representation 
of the interaction of the love between God and his servant, meaning the promised Messiah himself. That is to say, it was a light that proceeded upwards from the heart and there was a second light that descended from above. The meeting of the two took the shape of a column. These are spiritual experiences which the world cannot understand because they are far above the reach of the world's eyes. But, they, but there are some in this world who are made aware of these phenomena. In short, the wonders that were vouchsafed to me on account of this long period of fasting consist of these various kinds of visions. But I would not advise all and sundry to undertake such an exercise, nor did I do so of my own accord. It should be remembered that I adopted this hard physical discipline for nine to ten months in compliance with a divine command conveyed to me in a clear vision and I endured the extremes of hunger and thirst. Then I gave it up as a continuous discipline but had resource but had recourse to it from time to time. Promised Messiah والسلام, fasted as it is mentioned here for about eight to nine months. This is just before the demise of his father and the and he experienced a lot of spiritual experiences with this dedica dedication. And it is said that during these fasts, he reduced his food to a level of a quarter of a bread. And that's about it that he would eat throughout the day and he would devote his entire day in, um, in prayers and in uh, supplications. In 1876, the Promised Messiah salam, res received a revelation that his father's time is near. He received numerous revelations in this regard. I will read from the writings of the Promised Messiah in his own words how he described the time immediately before the passing of his father. When my revered father died, I was informed in a dream that the time of his death was near. Hazrat Masih al-Islam writes, I was in Lahore when I saw the dream, so I hastened back to Qadian. I found him ill with dysentery, but I did not expect that he would die the very next day. For his illness had taken a turn for the better, and he showed great steadfastness. The next day we were all with him during midday, the day being very hot, the very, he very kindly suggested that I should rest a little, meaning his father suggested him to rest a little. It was the month of June and the temperature was very high. It was, I retired into the upper room and lay down while a servant gently massaged my feet. In the condition which resembled a light slumber, I received the revelation was sama iwatarik, and then Hazur translated this revelation in his own words with an explanation. Hazur writes in the translation, "We call to witness the heaven where all degrees originate, and we call to witness the event which will happen after the setting of the sun." I was made to understand that this revelation was by way of condolence on the part of Allah the Almighty and that the occurrence to which it related was that my father would die after sunset. My father died the same day after sunset. Then Hazul writes further that at the demise of his father naturally he was worrisome because his father was the source of regular income that Promised Messiah also benefited from. So for as the Masih Islam further writes in his writings which I will present here and you will see the sentiment uh, of Masih Muhammad at that time he was overwhelmed, he was a bit worried 
and then how Allah the Almighty consoled him in the best possible manner. When I received the revelation, as Masih writes, from Allah the Glorious concerning the death of my revered father, which I have just mentioned, I was naturally troubled by the thought that some sources of income which were available only during my father's lifetime would now cease and we might face with and we might be faced with adversity. Thereupon I received the second revelation, Alaysallahu Bikaf in Abda. That is, is not Allah sufficient for his servant? This revelation afforded me complete comfort and satisfaction and it impressed itself upon my heart like a steel nail. I call to witness Allah the Lord of honor and glory in whose hands is my life that he has demonstrated the truth of this revelation of glad tidings in a manner that I could not have conceived of. He has provided for me as no father could have done for a child. After the demise of Hazrat Masim Al-Islam's father and as he received this revelation, I would like to also read a portion from his writings which further explains what he did right after he received that uh, revelation. The divine revelation was immediately followed by a feeling of mental relief as though some painful wound had been suddenly healed by a potent ointment, Hazrat Masih Islam writes. When the revelation came, I understood that God would not allow me to perish. I then wrote down the revelation and made it over to a certain Hindu Khatri, Malava, Malava Mal by name, who is a resident of Qadian and is still living. I also told him the whole story and sent him to Amritsar so that with the help of Hakim Malvi Muhammad Sharif of Kalampur, of, uh, of uh, Kalamnor, he might get the revelation inscribed on a stone and have a seal made of it. I selected the Hindu for the work simply to make him as well as Malvi Muhammad Sharif witness of this grand prophecy. In due time, Malvi Muhammad Sharif got the signet made for only five rupees and forwarded it to me and it remains with me still. This is the same ring uh, <coughs> with the signet alayhi sallallahu wa kafin abdahu that Hazrat Masim al-Islam wore throughout his lifetime and it is one of the famous revelations that in our community very popularly uh, uh, we also uh, wear the rings of alayhi sallallahu wa kafin abdahu and after the uh, demise of uh, Hazrat Masim al-Islam this ring was given to Hazrat uh, Khalifa al-Masih al-Sani and after his Khilafat he uh, dedicated that ring for Khalifa al waqt and uh, today Hazrat Khalifa al-Masih al-Khamir Sayyidullah bin Asil Aziz has the same ring as of Hazrat Masim al-Islam which has these inscription of Alayhi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam After Hazrat Ghulam uh, Murtaza Sahib Hazrat Masim al-Islam's father's demise the family affairs uh, were taken over by Mirza Ghulam Qadir, who was the elder uh, brother of Hazrat Masim Wasalam. And in a way, it relieved the Promised Messiah Wasalam, from these worldly indulgences of uh, taking care of the properties and dealing with these worldly matters. And he fully dedicated himself after that for the service of Islam. And he in a way, he very much uh, aggressively start take, uh, started taking on the anti-Islamic movements that were taking place in that era. So one uh, anti-Islamic movement that took place was by the Arya Samaj uh, with the religion of uh, Hinduism. And they were very organized at that time in India 
and they were starting different Samaj, it's called different communities in various parts of India in order to preach Hinduism and convert Muslims who were in a very petty condition uh, and were not uh, really uh, strong in their belief system to convert them over to Hinduism. And there was a community as, in Kavyan as well, and the secretary of that community was Sharampat Rai, uh, who lived in Kavyan. There was a small community with 15 members of Arya Samaj in Kavyan. And Sharampat Rai's uh, um, incident uh, was mentioned last in the last dars how Hazrat Masih Salam prophesied about the fate of his brother who was in the prison. So in one uh, of the newspapers which was mentioned previously, Manshure Muhammadi, Hazrat Masih Salam published a challenge. And he said that I will present from the Holy Scripture of Islam, the Holy Quran, that truthfulness is the foundation of all virtues. And he challenged the Arya Samaj that if they could bring forth one the half or one third of the quotations from their scriptures in favor of this topic, which is that truthfulness is the virtue of all, um, is the foundation of all virtues, then he would give a reward money of 500 rupees to that person who would bring forth uh, these uh, quotations from their scripture. But no one came forward. He also wrote a lot of articles and he uh, took part in a lot of debates. Back in those days, the way debates would happen is you would pick a topic and then you would write uh, or publish an article and that article would be then read in some congregation and that's how debates uh, used to took, uh, take place in those times. Hazrat Masih Madhulah Salatu Islam published various debates and articles uh, in the defense of Islam in various newspapers of that time. Then uh, the next uh, phase of Hazrat Masih Madhulah Salatu Islam's life in which, in, in which um, gave him a lot of uh, popularity in terms of his name getting to be known in masses was when he wrote Barahina Ahmadiyya. And the writing of Barahina Ahmadiyya is a very interesting um, incident in itself because it was the fulfillment of a blessed dream that Hazrat Masimo Salam had seen in his early life. And Hazrat Masih uh, has written about that dream of his and the writing of Barahine Ahmadiyya itself was completely under divine guidance. And the events that followed after the writing of the Barahine Ahmadiyya, how much popularity, how much praise, how much fame Hazrat Masih Madhulia achieved through his uh, exemplary writing of Brahine Ahmadiyya is a witness to uh, the fact that Allah Ta'ala <coughs> enabled the promised Messiah Salam, to write that extraordinary piece of writing. Hazur writes, in my early youth, I saw in a dream that I was in a magnificent building, which was very clean and neat where people were talking about the Holy Prophet وسلم, may peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. I inquired from the people where the Holy Prophet وسلم, was and they pointed to a room in which I entered along with other persons. When I presented myself to Holy Prophet وسلم, he was much pleased and returned my greeting with a better greeting. I can still recall and can never forget his charm and beauty and the kind and affectionate look that he directed towards me. He won my heart with his love and the beauty and glory of his countenance. He asked me, O oh, Ahmad, what are you holding in your right hand? 
when I looked towards my right hand, I found that I had a book in my hand, and I felt that I had written it myself. I answered him, O Messenger وسلم, of Allah, this is something I have written. He inquired, What is the name of your book? I was surprised and looked at the book a second time and felt that it resembled a book in my library which was called Qutbi. So I answered him, O Messenger of Allah, this book is called Qutbi. He said, Show me your book Qutbi. When the Holy Prophet وسلم, took it, it turned into a delicate and attractive fruit as soon as his blessed hand touched it. When the Holy Prophet وسلم, cut it as fruit is cut, pure honey began to flow out of it like pouring water. I perceived the wetness of honey on, my, on the right arm of the Holy Prophet ﷺ. From his fingers to his elbow, which were dripping with honey. I also felt that the Holy Prophet, may peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, was showing me all this in order to make me wonder. Then it was conveyed to my heart that there was the dead body of a person lying outside the door who, who had been destined by Allah the Almighty to be brought to life by, the fruit, by that fruit and that Holy Prophet وسلم, was to bestow life upon him. When this thought passed through my mind, I saw that the dead person had suddenly come to life and had come up to me running and stood behind me but that he was in a weak condition and if he was hungry and as if he was hungry. Then the Holy Prophet وسلم, looked at me smiling and cut the fruit into several pieces and ate one of them himself and gave all the rest to me while they were dripping with honey and said to me, O Ahmad, give one of the, of the pieces to this person so that he might draw strength from it. I gave him a piece and like a greedy person, he started eating it immediately. I then saw that the chair in which the Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was sitting began to rise till it reached up to the ceiling and I noticed that the face of the Holy Prophet وسلم, began to shine as if reflecting rays of the sun and moon. I was watching his blessed countenance and my tears were flowing because of delight and ecstasy. Then I woke up and I was still weeping profusely. Allah the Almighty then put in my heart that the dead person in my dream was Islam and that Allah the Almighty would revive it at my hands through the spiritual powers of the Holy Prophet وسلم, may the please and blessings of Allah be upon him. You do not know that this time may well be near, so wait eagerly for it. In this dream, the Holy Prophet وسلم, nurtured me with his blessed hands through his holy words and his light and the gift of fruit from his blessed garden. This is mentioned in Aina Kamalat e Islam, pages 548 to 549. Hazrat Masih Maud Salam completed Barahin e Ahmadiyya in 1879, and the announcement about this book was published in Zamima Ishaat al Sunnah. This is the same newspaper of Maulvi Muhammad Hussain Batalvi, who later on became a very staunch uh, opponent of uh, Hazrat Masih Mahdi Salatu Wasalam, but at that time he, were, he held Promised Messiah Wasalam in high esteem and he wrote uh, a great praise of Barayin Ahmadiyya in his Risala, the same Risala in which this announcement was published. 
since Hazrat Masimud Salam did not have the funds to publish the book, he made a request to the Muslims that they should pre-order this book in order to cover the expenses of publication and then those people will be uh, sent, uh, mail the book. And Hazrat Masimud gave another challenge which to this day no one has come forth to uh, to rebut uh, his, his arguments that were mentioned in, in this book. Hazur gave a challenge of rupees 10,000 for anyone who can refute the arguments that are mentioned in this book, half of them, one-fourth of them, or even one-fifth of them. And no one in his lifetime or later on could produce any arguments like that. The first two parts of Brahine Ahmadiyya were published in 1880. The third part was published in 1882 and the fourth was published in 1884. Fifth part, which was not the continuation of the original um, subject, was published in 1905. It should be noted here that the original manuscript that Hazrat Masim wrote for Brahine Ahmadiyya was about uh, was nearly 2500 pages and the parts of the Brahini Ahmadiyya that have been published they are not fully the manuscript that was written originally by Promised Messiah as a matter of fact the 300 arguments that Hazrat Masimud wrote in the original manuscript did not actually get published in the Brahini Ahmadiyya that we know today only one of the arguments was expounded upon and was published in these four parts that I have mentioned. And this was also through the divine decree and design because at that time, Hazrat Masim was when he was writing Brahim Ahmadiyya, he was very much focused on refuting the allegations of non-Muslims against Islam. And he, ha he set forth on writing this book with that mindset. But Allah Ta'ala had a grandeur plan uh, for Hazrat Masih Maudullah Salaam. He was going to make Masih Maudullah Salaam the Mahdi and the Messiah of the age and he, would, he was going to make him the uh, spiritual leader of the whole mankind who would bring back uh, the humanity towards Allah the Almighty and he would uh, be raised as the, the big reformer of the age. So with that uh, backdrop, the original manuscript, uh, as I said, uh, could not be published entirely and that manuscript was um, later on, it, it got burned and uh, destroyed. So we don't have the original uh, manuscript anymore, but this is an important historical fact to be uh, kept in mind. Uh, the fourth, uh, four parts of Brahine Ahmadiyya that are uh, published, first was, uh, first part is the notice that Hazrat Masim al-Islam wrote regarding the book. Second part deals with the erroneous beliefs of the Arya Samaj and the need of the revelation and the superiority of the Quran over other scriptures. You know, this has been the hallmark of Hazrat Masim al-Islam throughout his writings and throughout uh, his arguments, this is a consistent theme that he has presented in front of the world that look, I speak to the living God. God still talks as he spoke to earlier prophets. He listens and he, ta and he speaks to his uh, beloved uh, servants. Third part contains the details of the beauties of the Quran a great number of objections frequently raised against the Holy Quran have been answered in the third part. And the fourth part of the Ibrahim Ahmadiyya discusses the original origin of human language, the nature and importance of miracles, and the significance of prophets foretelling of the future. Future deals with superior, few, further, it further deals with the superiority of Islamic concept of God over other religions. So we are uh, talking about the year 
1882 and 84 and in 1882 Hazrat Masih Salatu received a revelation which became the basis or, or the beginning of his um, ministry uh, by Allah the Almighty. Hazrat Masih Salatu in 1882 received a revelation Kul inni umirtu wa ana awalul mu'mineen say that I have been commissioned and I am the first one to believe. This is a, 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 a great uh, prophecy as well as a revelation uh, to Hazrat Masih Madhulia Salatu Aslam, although the formal uh, start of the community happened much later when Allah Ta'ala uh, gave Hazrat Masih Madhulia Salatu Aslam permission to take back, but in the eyes of Allah Ta'ala and in terms of preparing Hazrat Masih Madhulia for the grandeur task that he was about to undertake, Allah Ta'ala had revealed to him in 1882 in these words that you, that I have been commissioned, Kul, meaning Hazrat Masih Madhulia is saying, I have been commissioned. In 1884, the promised Messiah Alayhi published a letter to well-known Christians, missionaries in India, uh, England and other countries and also to Brahma, uh, Brahman Samajist and Arya Samajist, naturalist, ruling princes, peers and Muslim divines. And, and he told these people that Allah Ta'ala has been revealing these uh, prophecies to him, Allah Ta'ala has been foretelling him about the future, Allah Ta'ala has been revealing him about other matters as well which has to do with the service of Islam. It, it should be remembered here that Hazrat Masih Salatu Salam was not a worldly figure. He was not uh, contemplating a worldly campaign. And that's why it is very important to understand that as Hazrat Masih Salatu Salam was receiving these revelations and he was recording these revelations as we saw that he was also telling his revelations and prophecies to people around him so that they become witness to it. But unless and until Allah Ta'ala commanded him to do certain things, he did not do that. For example, taking of bath. He, he did not take the bath until 1889. Um, there were a lot of prophecies regarding the promised son, which will come later. Uh, we will see that Hazrat Masih Salam was only conveying what he was being told. And that goes to show that he was, Nauzubillah, not making this stuff up, but he was just conveying the message that he was receiving from Allah the Almighty and the timing of everything and how Allah Ta'ala wanted the events to unfold and how Allah Ta'ala wanted Hazrat Masih Madhulia Salatu Islam to proclaim different uh, uh, proclamations or, or different um, announcements that he had made in his lifetime, being a Mahdi, being a Messiah, being an Ummati Nabi, they all came at the right time uh, through divine uh, guidance and through divine design, not, not any of his own accord. By this time, people had uh, knowledge of Hazrat Masih Madhulia Salatu Salam, there were a lot of devotees that used to visit him in Qadiyan who, who knew that this is the man of God, Th this is the time for someone to come and reform Islam and bring humanity back to Allah the Almighty and people saw that truth in his person, in his character and, and slowly people started uh, making a bond of brotherhood with him, a bond of informal allegiance, even though it wasn't a formal uh, allegiance, but informal allegiance, uh, he, people started uh, keeping him in, in great reverence. And, and there were a lot of servants that he uh, started having in these days. And he even published during that time in 1884 that if anyone wants to see, witness the truth, and witness the truth of my prophecies and my uh, revelations, he should come to Qadiyan and stay here with me for a year. And if no heavenly sign is shown in the favor of Islam in one year, Hazrat Masih Madhulia Salatu Islam will give 200 rupees as a, um, 
uh, an expense money for that person to reside in the in Kadian for for this time. In 1883, since people, as I mentioned, people were flocking towards Kadian in little numbers, and there was a need for a center. There was a need for a mosque. There was a need for a assembly hall. So, Masimud al Salatu Salam, under divine uh, guidance, built Masjid Mubarak in 1883, and the revelation that he received uh, regarding Masjid Mubarak, which Hazur also mentioned in his. Uh, recent uh, Friday sermon, the revelation was Fihi Barakatun Lin Nasi Waman Dakalahu Kana Aminam and then there was another revelation Mubarakun wa Mubarakun wa kullu amrim Mubarak Yajalu fi. The first revelation means there are blessings for people in this mosque. He who enters this mosque enters into peace. The second revelation means the one who blesses and the one who is blessed is in this mosque and everything blessed take place in it. In 1884, uh, a great uh, miracle, uh, we can call it, uh, happened um, to Hazrat Masih Madhulayah Salam, and this is famously known in our community as the Red Drops. In May, oh, May and June of 1884, Promised Messiah Salam was retiring in a tiny room uh, which was adjacent to Masjid Mubarak after Fajr prayers. Malvi Abdullah Sunori Sahib was present and he was pressing his feet with him, uh, uh, pressing his feet um, there. It was the Friday 27th of Ramadan that suddenly the body of the Promised Messiah Salam, suddenly trembled and his eyes filled up with tears. Malvi Saab saw some red drops on the ankle of Promised Messiah Salam, then he also noticed those red drops on the shirt of Promised Messiah Salam. And, and when he touched those red drops, um, they didn't have any odor, they didn't uh, have any, he, he also uh, put it on his tongue, it didn't really taste anything and he looked around and there were no signs uh, of anything that could have caused uh, the sprinkle of these red drops. So Malvi uh, Abdullah Sanori Sahib asked Masih Maudalai Salam when he woke up and later went to Masjid Mubarak that what were uh, these uh, drops uh, about and as Masih al-Islam initially did not answer his question, he ignored his question, but Malvi Muhammad Sunori Sahib um, kept asking Hazrat Masih Maud salam about the drops. So he finally uh, told him that it was a kashf of him. Um, and in Hazrat Masih Maud salam words, I will read it to you. Hazrat Masih Maud salam says, Whilst in a waking vision, I saw a beautiful big building there was a couch in it and on which sat an imposing figure. He was God himself. I thought myself to be a humble officer of the divine court. I had, I had written certain decrees which I placed before the Almighty for his signatures. I was asked to sit on the couch with deepest fatherly affection and love. Then he dipped his pen in the red ink stand, shook it a little, and then signed the papers. The red drops you see, he is saying to us, Malvi Sahib, are those that fell from his pen whilst he shook it. Hazrat uh, Masih Maud Salam, on the request of uh, Malvi, uh, Abdullah Sanori Sahib, gave his shirt, uh, the one that had the red drops, uh, to Malvi uh, Abdullah Sunori Sahab with one condition that after his demise the shirt will be buried with him so that it does not become a source of shirk in the community. And that picture of Malvi Abdullah Sunori Sahab with that shirt of the Promised Messiah Salatu Salam having those red drops on him is uh, preserved in uh, Makhzad Tasavir and you can look at it yourself. So in 1927 when uh, Hazrat uh, Malvi Sunori Sahab passed away the shirt was buried with him. Uh, <clears throat> I will stop here because I don't think we have much time left before the opening of the fast. 
In the next dars, I will pick it up from the blessed marriage of Hazrat Musim and his uh, uh, his uh, journey to Hoshiarpur, where the grand prophecy of Muslim Oud was made, and then the formal beginning of his ministry with the initiation of uh, Baith in uh, Ludhiana, India in 1899, and after that, um, uh, a lot of uh, uh, great history will unfold as well, inshallah, which I will present to you in the future two sessions.